Our press reviewer, Leo McGuinn, is back in studio. He's going to be taking us through some of the reaction in the Israeli papers. Yes, Sharon, as we've seen all morning, major upheaval in Israel yesterday and throughout the night, of course, sparked by those nine Palestinians killed during an Israeli forces raid. Let's have a look at how the Israeli press has react to, reacted to it. This is Haaretz, the more left-leaning liberal paper. This is their front page. Um, Israel prepares for escalation is the headline they've gone from. We'll have a look at Ynet as well, the most circulated, widely circulated paper in the country. Israel braces for more, more violence. Of course, we've already seen that violence and that escalation. Israeli forces shooting down rockets that were shot from Gaza last night and responding with airstrikes of their own. I want to show you this as well briefly. This comes from Israel Hayom, which translates to Israel today. It's um, owned by a friend of Benjamin Netanyahu, good friends of Netanyahu and their big Netanyahu backers. You can see the headline, the difference to Haaretz, several terrorists killed in Jenin prevents major attack. You can see the difference in language there. So what are the papers saying about the likely repercussions then, Leo? Well, we'll have a look at the Jerusalem Post and they pose that exact question. What will this do? They argue that, yes, the goals were achieved. Uh, three Islamic terrorists targets were killed during the raids, but what will this lead to? Every time three terrorists are killed, they say 20 or 30 more pop up. Uh, going back to Haaretz, they question Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's role in this. They say he didn't orchestrate this, but he could still very much benefit. This, of course, comes uh, amongst a backdrop, a huge backdrop of protests in the country that have gone over several weeks, protests against the reform of a judicial system that Netanyahu wants to bring in. And they're saying that Netanyahu could use these latest strikes to turn the crowd's attention, the protesters' attention, and get them back on side. On a different note entirely, Leo, there is a music legend making the headlines in the UK, but not for their music. Who is it and why are they in the news? When you say legend, this man is the definition of a legend, maybe a bit before our time, Sharon, but of course we know him. It's Rod Stewart. We can see him on the front of many of the UK papers. That's the Times. He's having a dance there. This is the Telegraph calling for a change of government. Hand over to Labour. Rod urges Tories. The Telegraph as well. You can see the mirror. Rod, we are failing. He's accused the Tory government of failing the country. All this came about from a phone-in, a phone-in on Sky News. They received an impromptu call from Sir Rod Stewart, I should say. He called and he made this argument. He used to vote Tory, he says, but now he wants to vote Labour and back Labour. The Telegraph have this. He says the Tory should stand aside. And he also said during the phone-in, he was willing to pay for hospital scans. He said that the queues had just got to a ridiculous level. This, of course, comes as NHH, NHS staff have, have striked over the last month, as well as ambulance staff with more strikes upcoming. It's led to Stuart claiming, in his words, not mine, it's time for a change of bloody government. And just in case you, couldn't th you thought it couldn't get any more bizarre, I want to add that Stuart called in to Sky News while he was building his model railway set. Leo, it would be very cruel to segue with a, an, a, from one mummy to another, but you are going to be leaving us with a story about a mummy in Egypt, one that's been dug up there. Tell us more. That's very cruel, Sharon. That's very cruel indeed. When you say old, you're not wrong. Rod Stewart's 78. This is a little bit older. Nearly 5,000 years old mummy discovered. One of, the, one of the biggest treasures in years, at the time, say, they found this mummy just south of Cairo. They dug up this corpse. It was among a group of four corpse, corpses dug up, all dated from the 25th to 22nd centuries BC. You can see on the BBC website here, one of the mummies, one of the oldest, the oldest one, in fact, was covered in gold. They also found pottery in the tombs. And one of the tombs, they found one of the largest statues they've ever found in one of these digs. And the great hope is for Egypt that it will bring tourism back to the country. Tourism, of course, affected by the, by the COVID pandemic. I think you're leaving us then, Leo, with the story about a 45-year-old who is trying to hold on to their youth in the US. Yes, Sharon. This is the 
slightly bizarre story of tech mogul Brian Johnson, as you can see here. He spends $2 million a year to get his body back to that of an 18-year-old. He said his goal is to reverse all of his body bodily functions so they're in their early teens again. He calls it Project Blueprint. He's got strict rules for it, such as a strict vegan diet and working out for at least an hour today, an hour a day, and also while sleeping, I'm not sure what this does, and I don't want to find out, Johnson's hooked up to a machine that counts the amount, amount of nighttime erections. I've got no idea what's that for. Uh, one bit of good news, part of the routine, he says, is waking up early every morning, something we do. So we'll be back to 18 in no time. Leaving us with some good news for those of us working the very early morning shift here at France 24. That's Leo McGuinn with the Press Review. We'll